Day 177 of the Ukrainian War Map, also known as the Russian Invasion of Ukraine. Josie here, and today is just another quick update as I take a simplified and down-to-earth approach to the happenings on the ground in Ukraine. And as always, I like to start off with some of the military losses, as you can see. Uh, we won't focus on it too much, but needless to say, again, this is just estimates but certainly shows a wearing thin of Russian forces, and that's really what it's all about there. So uh, military personnel lost on the Russian side, so 44,700, as you can see there. We'll actually move across to the military hardware, some big numbers here. So of note is the armored combat vehicles, 16 Russian losses there. That's just so substantial. And 10 additional tanks. That is just huge when it comes to tanks an additional uh, six artillery there as well. And these are really big figures and you'll probably see why soon because we'll go to the map here and have a look where it's been a super, super busy day in the last 24 hour reporting period. We'll start off again outside of Ukraine in the actual Russian territory, not Russian held territory, but the actual Russian Federation, the country itself. Now, if we zoom in here into Belgorod or Belgorod Oblast, Ukraine forces hit a Russian ammunition dump in Timo Novo, which is right around here. And, but also an airfield in Stary Oskol, so up here, as you can see there. So this is a pretty big deal. Just to zoom out there for your better context again. So pretty big deal. According to the Belgorod Oblast governor, so a, a Russian governor, the cause of the, the, the fires are still being established, but at this point we do know it's not just someone smoking again. So military targets being hit within Russian Federation land is now happening with increased frequency. It appears Ukraine is really now coming good on their previous promise of the counter-offensive in August, just like they said they would do. Uh, this is also a, a 100 odd miles from the border. Not, not just the front line, which is around there, but the actual border itself uh, with Russia. So it's even further. We're talking 150 kilometers, 200 kilometer range. Now Ukraine would be using HIMARS-like technology I don't think that they're necessarily using the HIMARS systems though, as it was provided to them by the United States on the stipulation that they would, uh, wouldn't would use it to strike actual Russian territory. It is probably another type of NATO slash European provided high precision rocket weaponry. But I think we're gonna see a lot of this more and more because Ukraine is proving their strike range capabilities of 100 plus miles well beyond the front line with, with just higher and higher frequency now. So that is crazy stuff there. Now nearby on the map, we'll move to Kharkiv. So we've got a photo or photos for this one here. Uh, Kharkiv was getting hit with a whole bunch of missiles overnight. Really imprecise residential hits again. Or Russia is just continuing its version of liberating residential locations either way. Then we move down to the Donbass region, the ever contested Donbass region. And just two hours ago, there was a fairly big explosion reported in, in Kadivka. So if I was to just pump that in the map and show you where that is, because it is in a bit of an interesting location and get that to load there. So there it is, the, the blue dot on the map there, which is actually 35 kilometers uh, to the front line. So that's, that's impressive. It's not just in the Donbass or Donetsk region, it's actually in uh, Luhansk, which is sort of really meant to be well covered. So early reports say it's another Russian ammunition depot, but I'm sure we'll get more uh, imagery and photos and information on that one later. Now we move down, of course, to Zaporizhia, the Zaporizhia Oblast, where Russia is still using the nuclear power plant uh, this location right there as a military base to launch attacks on Ukraine. They've even now gone one audacious step further and placed equipment and ammunition directly in the engine room of the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. As we can see with uh, some of these photos here, 
multiple vehicles with the Z markings could be seen inside there. It just sucks that the person who took this footage probably got in a lot of trouble, or they took the footage because they're an indispensable nuclear technician at the plant, so they knew they could get away with it. So I hope the, the latter, not the former, obviously there. Now we move across to Crimea. Countless news really coming out of here. Starting off with Sevastopol. So Sevastopol right there, which is the, it's actually the largest city in the Crimean Peninsula. And it, yeah, even bigger than uh, Simferopol there. So, so uh, several explosions were reported in northern Sevastopol at uh, the Belbek military airfield. So that's a little northeast. And also further explosions further northeast there as well. Uh, a little bit up at this location here. Sorry, I can't pronounce it. Uh, back Shai Saray. Now, to top all of that off, really busy as I'm saying, busy in the Crimean Peninsula in the last 24 hours. There were also explosions heard in Kerch in Crimea. Now this has significant meaning. Of course, Kerch is located at the uh, strategic Crimean bridge to Russia, right there. Now, before I go any further, here are some important facts about the oh, on the Crimean bridge. So it took three years to build. It cost four billion US dollars to build, but given economic and GDP per capita disparities in real life, it cost the Russian Federation more than that, probably in actual USD worth value of about 10 to $15 billion. It's 11 miles or 17 kilometers long. It's the longest bridge in Europe. And most importantly, it connects the Crimean Peninsula to Russia, making it strategically very important for Russia. Ukraine has now set its eyes on this bridge. So it does consider it a military target and it does have the strike range capability to take it out, as we can see with an undisclosed nearby location today at the Kerch uh, city or location around that area. I think this bridge is going to be hit at some point, rendering it unusable for Russia. This would be a huge loss for the Russian military, really, really. Even the pro-Russian Crimean governor fled over, uh, overnight back to the Russian motherland, which is exactly the opposite of what Zelensky did uh, six months ago. Of course, you might remember the USA offered Zelensky a ride out of Ukraine at the start of the war, to which President Zelensky simply replied, I don't need a ride, I need more weapons, which is the exact opposite of what happened with this pro-Kremlin Crimean governor who fled under cover of night uh, last night. Gee. Okay, moving across to news. So Turkey, definitely in the news here. So the Turkish president, Erdogan visited President Zelensky in Lviv earlier today. Uh, Erdogan was expressing his concerns about the situation at the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. And he said a repeat of the 1986 Chernobyl nuclear disaster should be avoided at all costs. And he argued that he was on Ukraine's side. Russia, which has been shelling Ukrainian positions from the plant's territory, has been accused of using it as a shield or even a tool of blackmail. So this is a big deal geopolitically. We've got Erdogan and Turkey who were trying to remain somewhat neutral amongst both at war parties, is now using strong language to convey support for Ukraine. Of course, Erdogan would be this way as Russia is the next biggest Black Sea neighbor down there, uh, which would be very affected by any sort of nuclear catastrophe for sure. Also from Erdogan's visit, Turkey announced it would assist Ukraine in post-war reconstruction of infrastructure. During his visit, a, a memorandum was signed whereby the Turkish government and businesses are expected to fund reconstruction of projects in Ukraine. So that is pretty powerful political speak right there from otherwise somewhat neutral Turkey from the past. Putin uh, would not be a fan of that. 
In more breaking news, the United States is set to provide another $800 million worth of military aid to Ukraine. And Estonia approves a new military aid package for Ukraine. So Estonia, uh, there's really no shortage of news coming from Estonia in support of Ukraine. If I pull up this different map here, uh, now, yeah, strong show of support, which is pretty incredible considering Estonia is another bordering neighbor of Russia, right there. So good on you, Estonia. And just lastly, to round off the video, this is just a simple mock-up image I located of a Ukrainian stamp saying goodbye to the Crimean bridge that connects to Russia. And uh, <laughs> we'll see what happens probably in the not too distant future there. So thanks for watching guys. Please leave a comment, subscribe, hit that like button. Try to ignore all those trolls in the comments for sure. And I do hope to see all of you guys there in the next one. Cheers.